Hello and welcome to Newsmakers for this Thursday, October 17, 2024. I'm Louis Butko. Thank you for joining us. And on today's show, I'm very pleased to be joined by the manager of Indigenous Programming for Niagara Health, Charity Beland. And Charity, I want to start just with your title right there. Um, that is a pretty interesting title, not something we see across health systems. What is it that you do? So technically, I'm manager of Indigenous Health Services and Reconciliation. Uh, with Niagara Health, and that means that we do everything. I do everything that has to do with anything that impacts patients, which means that I support staff, I support the board and the community, I have a team that directly works with patients. We do all things to help transform care for our Indigenous population. Okay, so Indigenous Health, how is that different than just the health that you provide for non-Indigenous folks at Niagara Health? Well, we typically don't provide the team specifically health for the non-Indigenous community, but really it's about understanding the context that our patients are coming in with. There's a lot of historical trauma, challenges, and Indigenous community members really don't want to go to the hospital because of racism and poor treatment and a lot of other things that have happened uh, in community. So. We go in and we support them, we meet them, and we build a relationship to really understand who they are and why they're there. And then we can support and help the care team navigate some of those challenges and really promote what an overall health and well being would be for that individual. The Indigenous Health Services and Reconciliation Team, you are yes. the manager of that. Yes. That is the IHSR. Yes. Um, how long has this been going on at the hospital and, and what did it come out of a, a need for? So the team has been in place since, it'll be two years in January, um, but Niagara Health was on a journey before the team started. We unfortunately had a loss. Uh, a young woman, Heather Winterstein, died in our emergency department, and that sparked a lot of, um, I guess, just concern as to what's going on, why did this happen, were there things that we missed that we could have done better, and the organization really came to an understanding that they knew they needed to do better, but they didn't know what they needed to do. So we had, you know, some internal reviews of our emergency department, external reviews of our emergency department. Really what it comes down to is Indigenous people need to be the ones that are leading hmm. what the changes are, what the care that needs to be provided is. And, you know, my team, every one of us is Indigenous and a member of the community. So it's up to us to be out there and listening and understanding what our community members need, then understanding the hospital system and how we can integrate those changes in a really meaningful and sustainable way. You mentioned two things there, um, going out, that being the outreach yeah. um, and the hospital system, that being the intake, people yeah. who need to go to the hospital for a very specific reason. And you mentioned people who may be hesitant. How much of, of this team's job is split on that outreach versus intake, or is it just a shared responsibility of, of all of it? Um, I would say that it's a shared responsibility in that we're all community members and we all participate in community in different ways. We do have a dedicated role that is community outreach and engagement and just making sure that our community members know that we exist in the hospital mm. and we exist at every site for Niagara Health. So whether it's you know out in Fort Erie or whether we're in St. Catharines, if somebody is coming into the hospital and they need support, a member of our team will be there to support them. Because um, you write, a promote a culturally safe environment and delivery of care at the services. Yes. That, that's, that seems like very specific language there. That is a goal, a goal to be able to promote culturally safe care for patients because that, what that means and what that looks like is different for everybody. So our job is to get to know and build those relationships. So what each person needs, depending on their background, Niagara's a really diverse community. We have people, mm -hmm. you know, we have Innu people, we have Cree people, we have Mohawk, we have people from all different nations. So our team in building those relationships, if there's not a service or a ceremony or a support we can provide, mm -hmm. it's our responsibility to reach out and provide those connections and supports for individuals so, because you mentioned something like ceremony yes. like that talk a little bit about that like that is that would be an indigenous specific yes. service yes. um would that be in a time of passing or just in yep. strength what, what kind of it um it looks like about? different things for different people mm -hmm. um we do offer the ability to smudge 
inpatient rooms on site within Niagara Health, which is really significant. While not all Indigenous people smudge, just the ability to have access to traditional medicines is an important education for staff and a sense of grounding and well-being for our community members. In the event that we have a birth, then you know we're happy to provide those supports and services. If we have uh, somebody who is passing, same thing. And a lot of it is just the supporting the individual and then educating the staff so they understand why it's important and what's going on, and then what this is going to look like for some of these people when they go home. And I think I can attest that you know even before this team being assembled, um, you know talking about the, the COVID vaccine. Um, Niagara Health at the time offering smudging at vaccination clinics yep. across Niagara. And again, yep. this is before the start of the team. Yep. And I have a feeling your role helped play a part in that too, even it, before uh, that. That was, uh, I believe, mm -hmm. Niagara Health had, um, they had some support from some of the local friendship centers. Mm -hmm. So ensuring that the people who were coming in for these clinics felt comfortable and safe, again, because there's a lot of historical trauma and, you know, testing and things like that that were done on Indigenous people. And to have those vaccine clinics led by and supported by Indigenous community organizations, and then the opportunity to go in and smudge while you're waiting in line or to hear a song or whatever it was, just to kind of bring people some peace and know that, you know, they're protected and they're safe in their culture. Uh, this spring, uh, you launched the uh, Indigenous Health Services Plan, yes. uh, which I have right here. And it's, yes. a, it's a nice, concise document, mm -hmm. 16 pages, um, about the journey to reconciliation. And, and that's the word we keep coming back to for an important part. As an Indigenous woman, to be a part of something that's so at the foreword, of, of, that's so necessary, health, yeah. It's it's literally the top thing we all want for each other, health. Reconciliation, what does that word mean for you within this uh, context? So that's, that's a, a loaded question, but I feel for myself personally, it's really about that journey of truth and understanding, acceptance, so that we can get to a place where we are doing what we can in the best way we can to support each other toward health and my health is not more important than your health and that there's an understanding of my needs just may be different than yours and what does that look like and how do we prioritize both and make sure that you know the individuals who are at a disadvantage such as the indigenous communities we have what we need in order to achieve what we see health is and I think when we get to that place of understanding, that's the reconciliation, that we are a priority and we get to define and determine those things that bring us health. Mm. Um, for reconciliation, you know, for me, it's education, right? And it's that part of it that I need to, especially with a platform like this, yep. to, be able to, to, um, to be able to share and, and, and to give light to. Um, and in that sense, education, what are you hoping people take away from the fact that Niagara Health is even doing something like this? I think it should be a challenge to mm -hmm. all organizations to first educate your staff, um, make that mandatory, because we are in a time where we can't sit in ignorance any longer. Mm -hmm. There's enough information out there. There's enough avenues for people to learn. But once you've done the education of you and you've learned those things, now what are you going to do with it? Right. And that's the important piece is the this is a document. But unless we put the plan in place, it's just a document. Mm -hmm. So for us, this plan, it gives us, you know, a pathway. And now the work begins. We go out, we spend time with community. We listen to them. What is important to them? What are their priorities? And again, that translation of now, how do we put this in place? Uh, what are you excited about when you, when you see this and you see it in people's hands and, and printed <laughs> and, and out there? Like, what, what, what are you most excited about when it comes to this? And again, like, I, I say excited in the sense that this is what you've been working for. This is what your career has taken you. Um, but in the sense of just putting this out there, that's where, where are you at? I am excited for a lot of things. I know 
uh, with Niagara Health, we've got a lot of big projects on the go, one being the South Niagara Hospital. And to just highlight some of the things that we've been able to do with South Niagara, really bringing together true engagement and collaboration on how the hospital was designed, the care that was taken to the land before we broke mm. ground, the programs, the art, the, this new hospital build is really going to be a beautiful symbol we'll say, of you know what that collaboration can look like. While we're building the team and doing the education and all of those pieces, when that hospital is built, what I'm excited for is Indigenous people to walk in, see themselves reflected and represented not only in the artwork, but in the staff, mm. right? That we are a safe space for staff, for more Indigenous physicians, more Indigenous nurses, that they come in, they know that they're safe to practice in a way that supports themselves and their community members. And then our community members come in and they just, they can really feel that they're going to be treated with respect and cared for. Um, I had a lot of family events in Ridgeway over Thanksgiving. Um, so my drive from St. Catharines to Ridgeway took me past the South Niagara yes, Hospital yes. multiple times. Uh, the structure is up, the cranes are up. It's pretty incredible. Yeah. Um, for someone who's a part of the organization, um, what has it meant to you to see the progress in, in what's going to be a world-class facility that's gonna serve thousands of people in, in South Niagara? It's exciting, but I also see it as a timeline. As I see mm -hmm. those foundational pieces coming in, I'm like, okay, what are the foundational pieces that we're putting in to make sure we have our policies in place, to make sure that we have all these things, to ensure that what the work that the team is doing is sustainable and is integrated into the foundation of Niagara Health. Well put. Um, now this is a, a four year plan. Yes. It's much more than that. Yep. You're talking generations uh, and years, seven that generations. Is the goal, yes. Um, what what should people be able to see when it comes to changes? I want to get to the artwork in, in just a second there, but beyond that, like you said, having doctors, staff, people who who understand, yep. you want all the doctors to be able to understand. Like this is a major education campaign because I I got Michelle's here who could probably give me the number on a number of NA, or, uh, Niagara Health uh, employees, mm -hmm. but this is a massive organization that's it's going to take some work. 100%. It, I mean, it's taking time just for our staff to understand that the team even exists and then what mm -hmm. we do, right? So that's, you know, taking the time to really be present and supporting. And the there is there is a lot of staff and making sure that, you know, we're just coming off the heels of the CMA apology. So mm. the Canadian Medical Association just um, provided an apology to Indigenous people against the harms caused. Again, that's another platform. So now how do we take that and we build on that and we leverage that to continue the work, to continue motivating all of our staff to recognize that we are a distinct population that has distinct needs and to really embed that and just just keep moving and inspire and support other hospitals and organizations to do the same work and work collaboratively together for the best of the indigenous community across the province and the country. Mm -hmm. More than 3% uh, of the population of Niagara, indigenous, of course, Niagara, yep. population of 500,000. And you really do highlight complete care. You mentioned the uh, births, but yes. uh, indigenous seniors, yes. uh, specifically, I feel like there is going to be hesitation from indigenous seniors sometimes to, mm -hmm. to like you said, just something as simple as a test um, because of past treatments. Yep. Um, how, what's that outreach look like? And, and is, is it, is it a bit harder to, when it's, you're talking about older generations? I don't know that it's harder. Um, I would say that it's definitely more time involved mm. because we really want to make sure that the individual feels safe and that if there's connections with their family that are important to them, that we take the time to build those relationships and connections. And we just we spend time with them and and we listen to them we have them share their stories some of them are really unfortunate stories of things that they've experienced in the hospital but then the the attempt and the the time to allow them to experience something different mm. so then when they're leaving the hospital they can be like wow that was something different then that's a story that they share with their family and it continues mm. and those those moments are so important because we are talking about generational change and even if the individuals we're supporting haven't experienced something horrific themselves they 100 percent have family who have hmm. so 
we're trying to support and take the time to heal all of those things so that when they're in with us, they feel safe. And we can identify, you know, our staff are safe. And they just take the time to listen and learn from, from the patients what's important. Yeah. Um, is this unique to, to Niagara Health or other hospital systems? I mean, I'm not going to ask you to speak for other hospitals, but from what you've been able to see in your role and, you know, from what I'm reading, this does seem like something that is definitely more in depth than what any other hospital system is doing when it comes to indigenous care, but it, it does seem unique, is it? Yes. Um, I mean, of course you have the centers like Toronto that, you know, they have the resourcing and the funding to do things a little bit differently, but as far as community hospitals go, 100%, we, we're doing a lot of work and I know that we're doing a lot of work in a good way because those hospitals are reaching out and asking for support. Hmm. So whether it's, you know, what, what and how did you do a smudging policy to what's important? And the response is always, I'm happy to help. You need to speak to your community also. It's not just about mm -hmm. what we're doing and you copy that. You mm -hmm. need to know what your community needs mm -hmm. because Niagara does have a phenomenal system with a lot of supports and services. And if we don't have it, it's not far to travel to get them, right? You know, to be able to go to Hamilton or go to those other places that poses extra needs on the community members and the individuals. So making sure that, that people are really looking to mm -hmm. their community and, and their staff. There's a lot of staff who are Indigenous that work within these organizations that don't identify. Mm -hmm. So asking themselves, why is that? What does the representation look like in leadership? What does the representation look like in your board? Mm -hmm. Who are making these decisions? because being an Indigenous woman in a system that I know causes harm to my community members is challenging. Mm -hmm. So making sure that we're asking those hard questions and we're using challenging language like racism so that we can make those changes. Now, it, like you said, you talked about leadership. Um, we were talking before you came on that this is probably possible because of the leadership 100%. at Niagara Health, talking about Ms. Guerrero and, and things like that. So what is it about the leadership that you have felt supported and why you think, again, every person has their own situation, but why you're, you feel confident that, that you are on the right track for Indigenous people in Niagara? Honestly, I think because I have open access to any member of the leadership team to go in and have candid conversations that I feel safe to do that and not judged or belittled or anything like that. It's just really informed me that we have a shared vision. Mm -hmm. We want to make sure that Niagara Health is a leader and that we are doing everything that we can to make sure that the population that we serve, including and especially Indigenous people, are supported. Mm -hmm. And you see that. Right. When you have these meetings and you have these conversations, it's you bring uh, a challenge or an issue and there. How can we solve this mm. and how can we solve this? Not just for this one person, but how can we solve this on a larger scale? And I think that commitment is is why I feel the way that I do about the organization. Well put. Um, we're talking about uh, the you mentioned some of the art. We mentioned the new South uh, Niagara Hospital. Yep. There's going to be a lot to feature. Um, this month, you announced the selection of three Indigenous artists to create artworks for the outpatient mental health units. Yes. Um, tell us a little bit about the selected artists and their works. So we we went through a process of you know doing a community call for the for the art and with little guidance but just recognizing that you know this was going to be in each of our three main sites so our Welland, Niagara Falls and St. Catharines locations and it will be in waiting areas and things like that so we want it to be safe and you know good for everyone but we just ask for people to interpret what they feel health is or you know what's important to them on their health and well-being journey things like that and we had nine beautiful submissions and we put it to a community vote uh, to do the selection of the, the pieces that, that we came up with. And uh, we have Alicia Lee Morin um, is going to be doing the St. Catherine site. I believe Richard Langlois is going to be doing the Niagara Falls site and uh, Delbert J.R. Jonathan is going to be doing our Welland site. And all of the artists, um, they have their own style. Hmm. They have their own background and history and understanding of culture and things that are important. So each piece is really, really different. 
and I know we're going to be doing some little teasers and features of things that are going to be coming out um, for the artists so that people can see. Um, but it's going to be really exciting and really beautiful because each piece is yeah. so different, so different. And it speaks to, you know, the different sites that they're at because mm. each site is so different. Yeah. So outpatient mental health, um, they approached us and recognizing that they wanted to be a part of this and they they needed to include and support the indigenous yeah. community. And this is what they came up with. So we ran with it yeah. and it's been a lot of fun. And again, back to what we were saying about leadership there. Um, it it must be nice for you to to not have to. Excuse me, it's it's me, Charity, right? No, it's, they, it's, they know it's, I'm it, coming. They, they know you're coming, <laughs> but the fact that they they want to come to you, yes. and say what can we do? That's got to be an encouraging sign for for you and your team. It's wonderful, and and recognizing that you know. The way that even the way that we did our office space, uh, our office is located at the St. Catherine site and we did a shared communal office space. So my entire team, we all sit together, obviously all have our own desk space, but the leadership team, any member of any of the staff will just come and sit in the office and share and talk and just, you know, it, it just is a space that feels different mm -hmm. and the energy within our office is different and we support staff we support the leaders we support it doesn't matter what level if they're EVS workers or whatever yeah. anybody who needs that support we're happy to provide it especially in a hospital exactly <laughs> especially in a hospital yeah. right when and you feel you know it could be the most stressful times and it could be the happiest times could be the saddest I mean that really is you're experiencing everything and to be welcoming yeah that's sort of the indigenous way well and recognizing that we don't know what anyone is going through. They may have personal challenges that they're going through and they have to come in every day and do their job. They may have just lost a patient and they have to continue going and working and serving other patients and just, you know, that where it's come take a five minute break, we'll sit with you, we'll help you in whatever way we can and in a good way send you back to do your job, mm -hmm. hopefully in the best way that you can. Sometimes it's taking a walk with people. Yeah. So we need more people. <laughs> <laughs> sounds like a really rewarding job. It sounds it's, like it can be tough, but it sounds like it's really rewarding. For absolutely. You. Yeah. Uh, what are you hoping somebody can take away from this conversation that we've had so far? What are you, what are you hoping something, something sticks with somebody? Um, I would say that we are in a time of taking personal responsibility and do the education, listen and learn. And then if you have questions, don't be afraid to ask questions and really become an ally. Work to become an ally if you're a non-Indigenous person because that is your responsibility and it can't always fall on us to do everything and care for everyone. And essentially the care that we provide for each other, you know, that says, that says volumes. That's, that's who we are as a community. Well, you are doing a great job. Uh, I should mention, there it is. Uh, there's the plan. Uh, it's available on Niagara Health's website. It's the Journey to Reconciliation, Niagara Health Indigenous Health Services. Like I say it's a, it's a concise read, <laughs> which is great, but uh, it, it's right there. Yeah. You put it in black and white, uh, what you're doing. I appreciate this conversation, Charity. Thank you so much. Thank you. My thanks to Charity Balan for joining me today. And uh, my thanks to you as well, because we could not do the show without your support. And hey, while you're here, make sure you like and subscribe to CHCH Podcast so you never miss an episode of this show or any of the other great shows we have for you including sports line with bubba o'neill or the trending now podcast as well i'd like to thank laura brody for directing today's episode and one more time thanks for checking us out from all of us here at chch i'm louis butko have a great day